real estate. This is where it all began for me. When I was 18, I began investing in real estate, and I became rich. I was a multimillionaire by the time I was 26. I did it. I was living the American dream. Then I lost it all. You know, I learned my lessons the hard way. This lesson explains the different kinds of mortgages that are out there and all about real estate. Now, I know most of you aren't buying a home anytime soon, but keep these things in mind. This is kind of like education. You can look forward to this kind of stuff in the future. Now, some of you will be getting an apartment, living in a dorm, or moving away from home soon, and this lesson's even going to give you insight into all those areas. So when are you all getting married? Two weeks from Saturday. Wow, congratulations. And you still don't have a place to live yet. She can't decide whether to rent or buy. We can't decide. Rent, of course, no contest. Why? I rent apartments. What did you expect I was going to say? <laughs> the appliances were new a year ago, and uh, don't worry about the stained carpet. We'll replace it. Uh, do y'all have any pets? A cat. A cat? We don't have a cat. We will by the time we move in. Well, it seems like y'all got several things to work out. Uh, that'll be 50 bucks per pet per month. 50 bucks? So we can replace the carpet when you move. Any questions? Um, can we just have a minute to talk this over? Sure. Uh, here's a copy of the lease. Come by the office when you're ready. Okay. We have got to decide something. What do you think? It's an apartment. It looks like every other one we've seen this week. What's there to think? Tell me again why we're doing this. Rent 600. Okay, with a cat, 650. The utilities, another 200 max. We tough it out for two years. We save $800 a month, and there's our down payment. Which mom and dad would gladly lend us right now which means we would owe them, and we'd be paying interest instead of making interest. Is that how you want to start out? Who said they charge us interest? You know what would feel really good? Is walking into our new home two years from now with only a mortgage payment, owing nobody else nothing. Yeah, maybe you should remind me of that from time to time. Gladly. <laughs> now, are we done looking, or do you want to check out some more places? Please welcome nationally syndicated radio host and New York Times best-selling author, Dave Ramsey. Awesome. Welcome to our real estate and mortgages lesson, where we want to keep the American dream from becoming a nightmare. Open your workbooks to that lesson, and we're going to talk about one of the great American dreams. When we say the great American dream, sometimes it means to own and operate your own business, but very often we are referring to owning your own home. Real estate, it's, it's kind of a uniquely American thing because in capitalism we have this neat thing called private property rights. And we get to own things. And as those things go up in value, those things help to cause our family to be able to win. And so real estate is a really, really, really fun thing. Now, I love real estate. I grew up in the real estate business. My parents were in the real estate business when I was a little kid all the way up to when I turned 18 years old. Three weeks later, I sat for and passed my real estate exam. When I turned 22 years later, as soon as I could, I sat for and passed my broker's exam. And so I've been a real estate broker for decades. And, and I love of real estate. Now, I've not been active in the real estate business for many years, but many of you know my story and that I made a lot of money in real estate and I lost everything in real estate. But that didn't make me mad at real estate. It made me mad at me being stupid, which is different. Real estate's a great thing. And I, in buying and selling foreclosure properties and bankruptcy properties and rehabs and all these kinds of things and doing quick flips and all these other stuff, I've owned over a thousand pieces of real estate. So I know a little something about real estate. Having been a broker all those years, having handled all those real pieces of real estate myself, and having watched how the business works. And I can teach you a thing or two about real estate, and that's what we're going to do. Before we do that, let's review our baby steps to this point, because we're getting pretty pretty far along in this baby step process. And, and you got to really help me here. Baby step one is? $1,000. $1,000. And that's usually going to take you about a month, maybe two months at the most. And if you make under $20,000 a year, that's $500 that you want to go with. Now, once you got that in place, then what's the next thing you do? Debt snowballs. Debt snowballs, where we list our debt smallest to largest, everything but the house, and we attack 
them in that order. We pay off all of our debt and we become debt free with gazelle intensity. And that usually takes on average 18 to 24 months. Some people do it faster, some it takes longer. Then when we're debt free, everything but the house in baby step two, we move on to baby step three, which is? Three to six months set aside in your emergency fund. You take that $1,000 account, raise it up to a fully funded emergency fund. Now we've got an emergency fund in place of ten or fifteen or $20,000 or whatever that represents three to six months in your house. And you have no payments but a house payment. Does that feel good? Say yes. Yes. That really does, doesn't it? Think about it. No payments. That's pretty incredible. And then you're able to start your wealth building and, and you go to baby step four. And Now baby step four is what? 15% of your income going into retirement and at the same time you're doing that every dollar we can find above that we start working on baby step five which is college. Don't pay on the kids college at that point now and we're also now we're doing baby steps four five and six at the same time and we're gonna add number six in this lesson the average price of a house would probably be about 170,000 let's see probably about 120 grand is probably $148,000. I think the average price of a house is about two hundred dollars uh, to $250,000. So baby step six, we're doing 15% in four, into, into our retirement account. In baby step five, we're doing kids' college, and then as we find any extra money in the budget or from anything else, we get raises or whatever else, we start chunking it on the house, and we want to pay off the house early. Now, let's look at real estate from several different sides. The first thing is, let's look if you were selling a home. When you're selling a home, you need to think like a retailer. Think if you go into a retail shopping mall. It shouldn't be dirty. It should be clean. It should be sparkling. The windows should be shined at the front door. You don't want to walk up to a picture window that's got a scene in it with mannequins and clothing and handprints be there. This is retail. You want things to shine and look just right. You need to think like a retailer. Think like your house is a model home, like people don't live there. Yes, well, we live here. No, you don't. It's a model home. We put our home up for sale one time. Our children were kind of mid-sized, and they kept going, well, Dad, we have to live here while we're doing this. I said, well, no, you don't. <laughs> you can pick that up, or we'll find a place for you to live. <laughs> so, so kitties and kids, aren't, they don't show up in model homes. There doesn't need to be any sign of kitties or kids, or even puppies. A big, beautiful dog greeting you at the front door will cost you $10,000. Because everybody doesn't like a big, beautiful dog. And everybody doesn't like a little kitty either. They don't think they're cute. All they th all, you know what they, some people see when they see a kitty? They see a litter box. It costs you it's a $10,000 cat. Think like that. Think like a retailer. Walk around. Look at the house. Put in 100-watt light bulbs. Don't put the cheap light bulbs in. Put the bright ones in. And make the room look bigger if it's well lit. Put extra lamps and things. Make sure everything's lit. Everything on your kitchen counter comes off but two things. I don't care. Put it in the cabinet. And in your closets, you're going to be moving anyway, so clean your closets out and take out about 75% of what's in the closet and put it in a box and put it in the garage because you're moving anyway. You, you know, people go in, you know what a cluttered, crammed up closet is? No closet space in this house. That's what the buyer thinks. When they walk in and see that there's room for things, they go, well, that house had a lot of closet space. Same stinking closet. It's a visual perception thing. You need to think like a retailer. When I had a home that was empty, a home that's empty that's closed up for a while will kind of get that stagnant smell, won't it? A little stuffy in there. If I was a realtor, what I would do is I would get my wife to bake some bread and I would take it over and let it finish baking in the home. And if you hadn't got time to do that or a wife that'll help you with that, we just take a little vanilla extract and sprinkle it on the stove and turn the stove on. And it kind of smells like bread is baking all through the home. You have to think like a retailer. You need to light a candle in this place before they come. And then you need to get out of the house. They're not there to see you. They don't want to see you. They might not like you. And it might affect the negotiation. You need to think like a retailer. This is a model home. You ever go to a builder's place where they have the model home and everything's perfect, the furniture's there, it looks like it's all designed, just Ken and Barbie must live here, you know? 
That's how they need to feel. Some of you got so much furniture crammed into one room and you think that's decorating. Throw a bunch of that stuff in the garage. Take all the stuff off your kitchen counters, one thing, two things back, light bulbs, think like a retailer. Your front door, those cobwebs in the corner, they're not cute. Who you, Uncle Fester? <laughs> Clean the cobwebs out of the corner. And little hand prints where little Junior's been looking out the door, little lip prints on the door. Clean your stinking door. You may think it looks cute. Somebody else thinks it looks like a daycare. And they don't want that house. So think like a retailer. That's how you do this. Now, when you get ready to do basic fix-ups, the $1,000 items, $1,000 worth of paint is a lot of paint. $1,000 worth of 409 is a lot of cleaning. So a li the, the elbow grease things that you can do, the cheap fix-up things that you do, walk through the house and do a punch list like you were getting ready to close on a brand new house and the builder hadn't finished it out right. And you want, I want you to fix that, and I want you to fix that, and I want you to fix that. Walk through your own house and do that and spend the time before you put it on the market taking care of these huge things that are really small. The return on investment on this is enormous.